Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the DJI Mavic 3. So we got the Fly More kit and both of us have had the DJI Mavic 2 drones. So this has a lot more different specs than the other one and we're going to talk about all that today. So we're going to start with obviously the Mavic 3 itself. So one thing that is very different compared to the Mavic 2 just from looking at it is the gimbal cover. So the Mavic 2 just had a little plastic cover that would go over the front. And this actually goes over the entire drone and wraps around the back over the battery casing itself. So all you have to do is pull this top tab and then open this. And then there's the cameras. And notice I said cameras because on this, one of the biggest noticeable features is that there are two cameras on it. So there's a wide angle camera, which is 24 millimeters. And then the other camera, let me see here in our notes, we got 162 millimeters. So you can choose which camera you wanna use and you can go up to a 28 times hybrid zoom on it. So it is only a digital zoom. There are not multiple lenses in it like some of the other drones have had. Um, but we'll open this up and show you the features about it. <clears throat> so as we get this open here, one of the other differences compared to the Mavic 2 is that look at the arms or the legs, so to speak. They are much skinnier than the old drone. So this makes it a lot more efficient for flying, which also helps to have a longer flight time. And on the back of it here is the battery compartment versus having it on the top. So this just slides in like that. So with this new design that they have, the drone can stay up longer in the sky compared to the Mavic 2. So these are the lithium batteries and it comes with three of them in this kit and it also comes with the charger as well. So you can charge three at a time which is nice compared to only being able to charge one at a time with the other Mavic. So as far as putting the propellers on, it's very similar. Um, you've got the gray and you got black and I believe the other one was white and black. Um, so it's very similar, you just find the correct spots to put them on, push down, twist to lock it in. It also comes with more propellers too, so if you do lose one or one breaks or something, it does come with extra, so that's always nice. That's all there is to it. So at this point, if you had the batteries charged up, it'd be ready to fly, but it does have a lot of different obstacle avoidance sensors on it as well. And then what's also different is that this one, you can charge directly through the drone. So you can either be plugged in to the charging kit, which you can use right here. You can mount this to the wall and have three different batteries going at once. Or if you just want to have it plugged in, you can plug the drone directly into the wall via a port back here. So the port back here opens up. And there's just a little type C charging port back there. And there's also room for a micro SD card. So now we'll move on to the controller. So this is a different design that it has. And we, I guess, use our iPads with it. You can use your phone, which is what most people do. And that just pulls open. You slide your phone or tablet on there or holder for your tablet, I should say. And to actually give you guys reference, if I grab my phone over here, this is a Samsung 21 Ultra. So when you put that in, there we go. It fits perfectly just like that. Otherwise, if you do have an iPad holder, you can put the iPad holder in here as well, since we use an iPad mm -hmm. mini. 
Um, we just like the slightly bigger screen. So we did look at trying getting the new app, DJI Fly, that compared to the DJI Go 4 app for the old drone. Um, it is not available on Samsung 21 Ultra and actually a lot of phones. So that's concerned a lot of people. Um, so that's also why we stuck with an iPad because we weren't able to use the app with our new phones. I believe it works with um, Apple products. Yep, there's quite a few Apple phones that it works with and then some older Samsung phones. Um, with the controller, you have the sticks down in the bottom of it down here, so you just pull these out and lock them in by spinning them. And then for charging it, you just charge at the very bottom where the joysticks just were. Let's see if it'll go in. There we go. Um, so you can plug in directly right there. There'll be four lights like most drones have to indicate it. And one thing you can notice too, so obviously there's wires. So this is the part where you actually attach your phone or your iPad and you connect it to the front of it here. So it all depends on what you're using, if you want iPhone or iPad. As Sarah said, there's just a few buttons on it. You've got your gimbal roll, just like the other drone, your photo and video button, and then just your joysticks, and then a couple other buttons on the front to turn it on and return home. So next we have filters. So these are ND filters. It comes in a nice little case that you can store them in. And you open this up. So these come in different sets. So there's four, eight, 16, and 32 stops darker. And you just attach those to your camera depending on the scene when you're flying. And then the last thing we've got is the bag. So honestly, we weren't sure if we were gonna keep this when we first bought the drone before it got here because we're so used to using hard cases for all of our gear. But this is actually really nice. Um, it's very padded, very thick, and there's a lot of different storage features on the inside. The drone fits great. There's extra storage for other cables or anything like that in it. And it's very heavy duty pieces, so it's not like cheap plastic that might snap. Um, so I think in the long run, we probably will be keeping this case. It also converts into a backpack, which is nice when you're hiking out to a spot, then you can just, you know, use it as a backpack when you're hiking. So to wrap up this video, we have a few more specs to talk about with the Mavic 3. So with the camera, it does shoot 5.1K resolution video at 50 frames per second and 4K video at 120 frames per second. The Mavic 2 Pro, that shot at 4K 30 frames per second, and both of them shoot at 20 megapixels. We are excited to actually shoot a lot of slow motion with the Mavic 3. Um, we couldn't do that as much with the Mavic 2 since it couldn't do 120 frames per second in 4K. And then the transmission distance is a lot better versus the Mavic 2 as well. So this one goes up to 15 kilometers. The Mavic 2 used to go 10 kilometers, so they did add on a little bit of range. For us, that doesn't make a lot of difference because we aren't flying away that far. And then there is a new tracking system, an obstacle avoidance system. Um, so this can actually detect obstacles as far away as 200 meters. And the Mavic 2 could only do up to 40 meters. So that'll be a big improvement, especially if you're using return to home or anything like that. It can actually detect it versus flying all the way up to the altitude that you set it to and fly back. And then there are going to be more updates coming out in January of 2022. So that's going to be for Active Track 5.0, smart shooting modes, and additional features. So everything isn't available right now on the drone if you're buying it currently at the end of 2021. Um, but those updates will be coming out very soon. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, just put them below and like the video. So thanks for watching. <laughs>